So guys, I'm here on Antique Street here in Hong Kong. This is a street where people sell collectible items. And for today's topic, we're going to talk about non-fungible tokens, NFTs. You probably heard about these and they're starting to get a little bit popular. So I want to use this as the perfect backdrop to describe what they are, what they mean, and the future of non-fungible tokens. So let's start off with what's behind me. These are the original collectibles. These are antiques. These are worth a lot of money, especially if you find one that is real. So why are they worth so much money? It's because they have a story behind them. Maybe it's a jade pendant that someone used all the way back in the Ming Dynasty. Or maybe it's a spoon. It's a spoon that the emperor used to drink his soup. All of these items, they're valuable because they have a story attached to them. And they cannot be exchanged with any other item. So one spoon is not equal to another. And that's exactly what non-fungible means. They're not the same. Even though they might look the same, they might be spoons, but not every spoon is the same. Not all of them are created equal. And the best example of a non-fungible token is a CryptoKitty. Each CryptoKitty looks different. They have different DNA. They have different kind of attributes like color, skin tone. They're different, just like these antiques and special items behind me. So the key here is that we don't have to be on the floor crawling, looking at an antique at every angle to see if it's real or not. In fact, just scan it on the public blockchain and voila, you can verify this item if it's known, if it's part of a published hash, if it's authentic or not. So by having a blockchain to provide trust, it solves one key aspect of a collectible. Now, there are another aspects too. For example, the number of a certain item out there. So you can very much verify that this is one of two limited edition items and you can search where the other items are. You might not know who owns them, but you can know what's out there and also if how many are still around. So let's take a look at the technology available. So we have ERC20, that's the fungible version. That's where every coin is the same. So that's where you have the Binance coin, Omize Go, 0x Zilliqa. Now that's evolved into the CryptoKitties ERC721 where cats are not the same. So through ERC721, it allows the creation of these non-fungible tokens, which can be like CryptoKitties, and they can have special parameters like breeding or even keeping various um, ideas like DNA. Now on top of this, we have ERC1155, and this is very much an improved version of ERC721 and ERC20. It's combining these two aspects together. So the argument here is that in practical games like World of Warcraft, there is almost over a hundred thousand items and some of the items for example world of warcraft gold that's fungible because that's used as a currency and then there's also non-fungible assets very very specific quest given items and these well shouldn't be fungible they are very more unique so what this new token standard is trying to do is it's trying to allow the incorporation and issuance of both fungible and non-fungible assets. But that doesn't mean every item is going to be valuable because a Ming vase has value because of its story, its history, the fact that it's used thousands of years ago and its limited supply. So how do we create value out of digital items? Well, that is by creating usage for them. And this is the difficulty now. Right now, we're at a time where we're trying to think, okay, how can we create an ecosystem of digital items where people can use them? And of course, the most obvious answer is video games. Just like in CryptoKitties, people use them to start breeding more cats, but we can extend that to even further, use it as weapon skins in video games or even costumes. And it's already in place. Digital items, for example, in video games have been around for such a long time and skin trading is very popular biggest marketplace right now is off skins and that's been used to trade CSGO skins and player unknown battle skins, brown skins for a long time. They're creating a new exchange called World Ass Exchange Wax. So what's special about Wax is that it's designed to be a exchange specially for non-fungible items. And this is very different from something like Binance, which just deals with currency. But here, each individual item is considered separate and there is a much more interesting browsing interface for it. In terms of current development, Wax Express trades already work and use a blockchain. It's very interesting that they adopted a version, a variant of EOS to do so. 
The reason for this is they want to handle a large number of transactions per second and have very little fees. They don't want to be hobbled by other networks. So the idea behind the WAX ecosystem is that they provide the trade platform and the tools to facilitate the trade. And they even have transfer agents that can allow transfer of items that's on other blockchains too. The top decentralized applications that's using the WAX blockchain is Vigo. So Vigo is kind of like opening CSGO skins, but with new skins that can be used in games in the future. And what's interesting about this is that they have a very high number of transactions per second on this platform already. So if you look at statistics that they gather, they have weekly transactions, like recently above 1.5 million transactions per week. That's like a huge number of transaction volume and that's because there's so many items out there so it's very interesting to see that blockchain can already handle these transactions that the wax blockchain can already do so and it's going to be interesting to see what games can use this and what the ecosystem that can grow out of it but are we a little bit too early this is a question i've been asking myself for a while because here you can see behind me the ecosystem is well and alive people know the value of these particular items and they're willing to enjoy this ecosystem but with crypto we're not there yet and the fact is that there are visionaries out there dreaming of new concepts to use them and to use them in different ways for example in the case of video games can you use an item in one game and move it to another why not that seems pretty interesting right so what are my final thoughts on this? I think CryptoKeys really set the example and said, you know what, this is a model that works. There is something here that's special and players want to keep items. But I do want to say that there is also a counter side, flip side to the argument, where there are a lot of new projects being set, um, started, set forth, which charge a lot of money for pre-orders. So in this example, I, I really don't want to pick on them here, but um, they, they're charging like gods and chain. They're charging almost one ETH for a shiny legendary packet. And for me, I feel like it's sometimes I feel like if there's too much money involved for people, if this can potentially become a money grab situation. So I don't view non-fungible tokens as an investment opportunity. So you buy them because you want to have fun rather than it's an investment opportunity that you can flip it to make more money in the future. So what do I see in the future of non-fungible tokens? I see this as, as an area for exploration, for people to create something and for people to enjoy it. It's not expensive to create non-fungible tokens. We don't need massive ICOs to bring about you know, a game or whatnot. It's relatively cheap to develop and to test out an idea. The barrier of entry for even creating a video game or creating any sort of asset, it's not very high. It just takes a few developers, five, six developers to make a game. And why don't we try that? We don't need that insane amount of money, but we can get a lot of joy from discovering and exploring this space. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this little tour around Hong Kong. If you liked the video, click the little like button down below. And of course, remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.